Today, we're going to explore the fascinating story of one of the most powerful and famous Muslim sultans. We'll discover how an ordinary person became a legendary figure in Islamic history and a nightmare for European kings. Let's talk about Salahuddin, son of Najmuddin, who was born into a Kurdish family in present-day Iraq. When he was born, an interesting incident occurred, prompting his family to leave Tikrit for Mosul and then Baalbek. Salahuddin spent his childhood and adolescence in Baalbek, where his father ruled the city. There, he learned all sorts of sciences and techniques under his father's guidance. The situation in Fatimid Caliphate was quite turbulent, and the Crusaders who controlled Palestine saw an opportunity to take over Egypt. This was a major concern for the Muslims, as it could have led to a complete defeat despite Egypt's abundant resources. However, after many conflicts and wars between the troops led by Asaduddin Shirku and the Crusaders, an alliance was formed through Shawar's betrayal of the Zangid. Eventually, the Crusaders were forced to leave Egypt, and the Fatemi Caliph appointed Shirku as the minister of Fatimid, despite the opposition of a Sunni religious person. This position meant that he had full military, political, and even judicial powers in Egypt. The Caliph also appointed Salahuddin, who had shown great courage in wars, especially during the deadly siege of Alexandria as his deputy. Finally, he appointed himself to the position of the ministry. It's been less than two months since the conquest of Egypt when Asaduddin Shirko passed away due to overeating. This marked the end of his great chieftaincy and the beginning of a larger epic. After his death, the advisors of the Fatimid Caliph suggested appointing Salahuddin as the minister because he was young and inexperienced. They believed that this was an opportunity to regain power from the Zangid. However, Salahuddin, also known as Malik al-Nasser, quickly proved his merit. He removed people whose loyalty was doubted and replaced them with his trusted associates. He also repelled a rebel in southern Egypt and an attack by the Crusaders. Despite his reluctance, he was eventually commissioned to overthrow the Shiite Caliphate of Fatimid Caliphate by Nuruddin Zangi. With the death of the 20-year-old Caliph of Fatimid, Salahuddin destroyed the Caliphate and became the ruler of Egypt. Although he still had a great rival, Nuruddin Zangi, who appeared to follow him on the surface, Salahuddin refused any meeting and alliance with him under various pretexts, in order not to become a simple puppet for Nuruddin. At the same time, he started conquering Yemen, providing him with shelter in case of Nuruddin's attack and possible defeat. He easily captured Yemen. After the situation between Salahuddin and the Zang had worsened, Nuruddin decided to invade Egypt. However, he passed away due to illness, and Salahuddin became the undisputed ruler. Subsequent events went entirely in Salahuddin's favor. Firstly, after Nuruddin's death, his 11-year-old son Saleh took his place. Only two months later, the Palestinian king Emery passed away, and his 13-year-old son, Budin IV, who was also seriously ill, replaced him. Despite having resisted the Zangad for years, the Byzantine king defeated Kilij Arslan II of Seljuk and passed away after a while, leaving Byzantium in chaos. After some time, Salahuddin invaded Syria in the name of protecting the young king. He captured Damascus without war, and Sultan Saleh Zangi retreated to Aleppo. Despite the siege, Salahuddin never went to war with Sultan Saleh until he passed away due to illness. This led to Salahuddin becoming the real king of Egypt and Syria. In 1185, King Baudin IV of Palestine passed away at the age of 24, and his six-year-old son took his place. Unfortunately, the young king also passed away shortly after due to illness. Guy of Lusignan, who had just married the king's mother, came to the throne with his support. The new king heavily depended on Prince Arnaut Renaud de Chateau, who opposed any peace with Muslims and was fiercely belligerent. He even sent people to Mecca to massacre Muslims, which was a surprise to all. After Prince Arnaut's actions of massacring and looting several convoys of merchants, which went against previous treaties between Christians and Muslims, Salahuddin made the decision to fight against the Crusaders. 
He invited Muslims to join him in a jihad against them. And in a short time, people from different ethnicities, such as Turks, Arabs, and Kurds, flocked to Damascus to join Salahuddin's army of 12,000 people and a large number of volunteers. Together, they prepared for war against the Crusaders. Meanwhile, the Emirates and Crusader Knights also joined forces to fight against the Muslims. Salahuddin began the war by capturing Tiberias. Count Raymond, the former ruler of Tiberias who wanted peace with Salahuddin, was opposed by extremists like Renaud de Chateau, who insisted on going to war. Muslims then widely attacked the Christians. Salahuddin took a proper position and camped in the village of Hatin while waiting for the Christians. The Christians were attacked by the Muslims while on the road and faced thirst due to the lack of water along the way. They had to wait until morning, and those who went to the lake to drink water were either killed or captured. The remaining Christians knew that their only chance of survival was to fight, and they fought bravely. The Muslim armies were almost defeated, but Saladin's cries of Satan should not win rallied the troops. After a fierce battle, the Christians were eventually defeated, and King Guy Lusignan and Renaud de Chateau were captured by the Muslims. King Guy and his men were pardoned, but the knights of Tampatalia and Hospitalia met the same fate as Arnot. Salahuddin scolded Prince Arnot for his wrongdoings and gave water to the thirsty Guy Lusignan, which meant they were safe according to Muslim custom. The remaining water was offered to Prince Arnot, but Salahuddin refused to give him any water because he had sworn to kill him with his own hands. Prince Arnot rebelled against the army, but he was eventually killed by Salahuddin. The Muslim army then took over the current cities of Palestine, Lebanon, and Jordan, including Akka, Ashkelon, Jaffa, and more. They advanced towards Jerusalem, and despite the resistance of the Crusaders for a month, the city was taken over by Muslims. The Muslim armies triumphantly entered the city with the order of non-aggression, turning the Al-Aqsa Mosque, which had been converted into a church, back into a mosque. They gradually released the captives, and the Crusaders left the city. A week later, thanks to Salahuddin, Muslims were able to pray in the Al-Aqsa Mosque again after many years. After Salahuddin's successful conquest of Jerusalem and other cities, the majority of the Crusaders moved to the port city of Tyre and formed a large force to seek revenge. They sent a message to the entire Christian world, and soon Pope Clement III issued a call to fight for the recapture of the Holy Land. The King of the Holy Roman Empire, Frederick the Redbeard, also moved towards the Muslims, but he tragically drowned in a river just before the war with Salahuddin. His armies dispersed, and a great danger to Islam was eliminated. However, the Crusaders soon strengthened their position in the city of Tyre, and they laid siege to the strategic city of Akka for over a year. The siege continued until the arrival of Richard the Lionheart, the King of England, and Philip II, the King of France. The two kings led the battle for the city, and on Richard's orders, all captives were massacred. The city of Ashkelon soon fell, but the Crusaders could not achieve any more victories and resorted to a war of attrition with the Muslims. Although they won many battles, they ultimately failed to conquer Jerusalem. Richard, who could not give up more of his land, was left alone by Philip II and Leopold V, the Duke of Austria, who returned to their lands over a dispute with Richard. The Crusaders were eventually forced to accept a peace agreement, according to which Ashkelon was returned to the Muslims and the rest of the captured areas remained in their possession. The Crusaders could go on pilgrimage to Jerusalem without carrying weapons, and Salahuddin eventually succeeded in this war. After years of war, Salahuddin suffered from various diseases and was severely incapacitated following the end of the Third Crusade. In 1193, he succumbed to yellow fever in Damascus and passed away. He donated all his wealth to the poor, and nothing remained for his funeral. He was buried outside the Umayyad Mosque in Damascus, marking the end of the story of this great hero of the Crusades. Thank you for watching. Please like the video and subscribe our channel. Until next time.